the true enemies of Christianity, the true enemies of the church. You know, there's there's lots of pastors, you know, especially in America, will be saying that you know Islam is the enemy of Christianity. You know, Muslim extremists are the enemies of Christianity. That is just a lie. There's no way in the Bible in which you can say that a religion of any form is enmity to Christianity. Of course, Christianity will always be incompatible to any other form of religion. That's just fact. But you cannot sing aloud a religion and say that you know, Islam is the enemy of Christianity. There's no such a thing. The problem is that we, you know, Christians sometimes tend to love lies than the truth, and then they, they, they love these lies, and they, they, they make them bigger and bigger, and then at the end of the day, the lie looks like the truth. Even though it's a lie, because there's no way that anyone can point to the Bible and say that this is the line of scripture which says there's a religion. I'm not even talking about Islam. A religion is the enemy of Christianity. There's no such a thing. The enemies of Israel, even the old temple, the old house of God, the enemies of Israel were not the people around them. The enemies of Israel were the Israelites themselves. You see, it is when they stop worshipping God that they self-destructed. You see, the enemies were not the Moabs, the Egyptians, and all that, because as long as the Israelites believed in God, submitted themselves to God, and believed in the promises of God, they always prospered. But whenever they stopped believing in God, Whenever they stop, you know, believing the promises of God, that's when the problem starts. You see, and we are beneficiaries to what Israel was, to what, you know, the kingdom of God in terms of Israel was. As Christians, we are beneficiaries. And the problem is still the same. The problem is not what surrounds us in terms of religion or democracy or, 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 or persecution and all that. The problem is us. You see, God was able to defeat giants through men who were like, who first, who said, listen to what the Israelites were saying. They were saying that when they were comparing themselves to the giants who were, you know, around the land of Canaan at the time, when, when you know, the Israelites were inheriting the land, they said that they felt like grasshoppers. That's how big these men were compared you know, compared to, to the Israelites. They were huge. They felt like grasshoppers. I mean, think about me looking at a grasshopper. A grasshopper is very small. That's how the Israelites felt. But somehow they were able to defeat these giants. Why? Through God. Through the power of God. But when they stopped fulfilling the law of God, when they stopped applying the, the, you know, the, the statutes of God, that's when they fell. That's when the nations, even when there were no more giants, became stronger than them. So the enemies, the enemy of Christianity, the enemy of Christ has always been one. In actual fact, it has always been Lucifer, Satan, the devil. It is the, the thing that he did in the garden. He was the one who wanted to prevent Moses from getting the law. And he's the one today, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, who has now infiltrated the church. Paul said that there will be time when man will give heed to doctrines of demons. So Paul was saying that the devil will infiltrate the church. Now what is going to be taught in the church will be doctrine of hell. Doctrines leading to hell. But now man wants to stand, you know, man wants to stand in a pulpit and say that some Muslim somewhere who put bombs on his body and destroyed himself killing some Christians, that, that's the enemy. No, the enemy of the church, the enemy of the Christian is spiritual, not physical. Most religions in the world are physical. It is about what you do, you know, to get somewhere. We are the children, we are the spiritual children children of God. 
our enemy is spiritual, never physical. That's why the Bible says that don't fear anyone who's going to kill the body, but after that has nothing to do. But fear the one who can kill both the body and the spirit. You understand that? But because people believe in this nonsense, this preaching that, that you know, there's some enemy somewhere who's against Christianity and talk about the end times and you know, have pictures in their churches and all. That's just nonsense. The enemies of the church of the Christian are in the church today behind the pulpit preaching that God wants to make you rich. Those are the enemies of the church. The enemies of the church are the people who are telling that you can have your best life now. Even though the very Bible which they claim, which they're going to use to prove that God wants the best, to have their best life now, says that your best life is coming. Because the Bible says that the things that God has prepared for his children, no man has ever imagined. Then how can you be able to have your best life now and not think that that which God has prepared for you is not better than what you can get now? Because this is just logic. Anyone who believes that they can have their best life now in the Christian church, meaning that they're saying that the promise of God is nothing compared to what they can get now. It does not matter whether you think that this best life which you have is given by God. It can never be compared to the life that you're going to get after God reveals his kingdom. Do you understand that? But then how can you believe you can have your best life now? How can you buy these books? How can you believe such nonsense? It is nonsense to the Christ, to the Christian, who is filled with the spirit of the risen Christ. But it makes sense to the one who is carnal, who does not really believe in God, but wants something that he can get from God. So the enemies of the church are right now men wearing suits, preaching behind the pulpits of Christian buildings, which we call the church. Those are the enemies. Forget Muslim, forget what governments are, you know, what, what laws governments are passing across the world. That was always to be expected. You must know that you do not belong to this world. This world is not yours. You belong to a city that is to come. You belong to the world that is to come. You do not belong to any country. Yes, you have, you know, some personal identification. Because that's what you're supposed to have if you belong to a country. But this is not your home. It's kind of shocking when you see sometimes Americans, you know, having placards, you know, displaying that they are against some Muslim conference or something. What are you saying? So you're saying that the United States belongs to you? It does not belong to you. If you're truly Christian, you would know that the United States does not belong to Christ. It belongs to Christ in terms of the sovereign reign, the sovereign rulership of the world of Christ, but it does not belong to Christ in terms of the special children of God. Because the special children of God belong nowhere on the earth. They belong in heaven. That's why they shouldn't care about fighting for silver and land and gold and rights and all that. What they should be doing is preaching the word of God for all men to hear so that they could believe. What we should be doing is displaying this, this spirit that we claim to have. Which will separate us from other people. And when other people look at us, they see that we're different from them. But if we are fighting for the same things as they fight, how then can we convince the world that we are children of God? If we believe in the same thing, we have the same goals, we fight for the same rights, we fight to be treated the same as everybody else, how then can we claim anything of being holy and of being children of God, of being filled with the Spirit of Jesus Christ? We cannot claim anything because we're the same as you know, the way people live. We live the same, we have the same ambitions, we believe that some politicians apparently were sent by God to be president of their country. God hates kings. God hates presidents. Why? Because God is king. If you understand scripture, you would understand that. Because God was angry that Israel wanted a king but yet gave them the desires of their heart. And he warned them and said that this is what kings are going to do to you. They are going to collect taxes. 
They're going to take your finest young men to put them to be soldiers. Is it not what the president, the politicians are doing today? That's what they're doing. They're taking young men, sending them to wars, and they come back in body bags. And yet they claim to be Christian. And yet Christian claim that these people are their president which God has sent to them. God allows people to be kings. He allows them. But that's not what he wants. God allows people to be presidents. He, he allows it to happen. But that's not what God wants. You understand that? Because God does not want any other king except him as king. If you understand scripture from Genesis to Revelation, you understand God doesn't want any other king except Christ to be king over everything. But how then can Christians think that God has sent a man to be president in their country? Do they read scripture? Do they understand scripture? I think they read, but I don't think they understand. You see that? That's why they are able to think that the Muslim is their enemy, and then they, they think that, you know, Muslims coming to certain countries is bad. It is good when the world religions are coming to other countries, to, to your country, why? so that you could be persecuted, so that you could be hated, so that now you could want to leave this world and go to God. Because as long as you're comfortable, you're going to think that you own something in this world. And as long as you believe that you own something in this world, that's when you're going to believe these doctrines from men telling you that your enemy is Islam. Not seeing that these false prophets, these false preachers, these false teachers who are telling you that you can have your best life now are your real enemy. Because they are the ones preaching you to hell. Because they make the, the promises of God look like nothing. Because they tell you that you can have it right now. Here, in your corrupt body, you can have all these things. You can never have any kind of true joy as long as we are still in this corrupt body in this body of sin we can never have any true joy unless until this body and this this soul which god has done work in separate and the soul go to god and the body go to the death the ground where it comes from we can never really to have true joy so in a way we are our own enemies we are our own enemies because when true men of God preach truth, true salvation, true saving truth, we hate them. We think that they're, they're legalists. You know, they, they, they belong in the old days. We even, men are even saying now the gospel of Jesus Christ is not for our time. It was for the Jews. They say it's grace, it's grace, it's grace. You don't even have to repent what you have sinned because it's grace. Everything has been forgiven. So if you don't have to do anything, in your salvation, not to say that you are saved by works, but because you have the Spirit of God, and God does work through you. So you're not saved by what you do. You do what you do because you are saved. But if men are saying that, you know, when you're saved, you, you shouldn't even have to do anything. That means that this new spirit which you have, who comes from God, must not animate you to do anything. To, to make you look like a child of God, to separate you from all the peoples of the world. You don't have to do anything. And you ask yourself, then why do they preach? If the Spirit does not make you do anything, why do they preach? The very same people who are saying that, you know, the Spirit does not do make you do anything. You just sit and enjoy the grace of God. Even when you sin, you don't have to repent because you don't have the disgrace. That means you do something, it's no longer grace works. The problem, why then do they write books? Why then do they preach? Is it not works? If they cannot claim that it is the Spirit who makes them do the works, then why do they not want their congregation to be doing things which is the works of the Spirit through the congregation? You see the contradiction in this. But the problem is that it is what Paul said, that people will not endure sound doctrine. They would want something that will make them feel saved, but without them having any change in their lives whatsoever. That's why men even are able to teach that if you have believed, then you will be saved. And after you're saved, you can kill, you can do anything, you still be saved. Don't realize that the fact that you're still acting lawless and in opposition of the spirit of the risen Christ Proves that you're not saved. And the reason why you're conjuring up, you know, doctrines which are anti-God, anti-Christ, because you're saying that the promise of Christ are false. Because you're saying that that 
which can be had when Christ comes as king is not as great as what you can have now because you can have your best life now. How then can we believe that the enemy of the Christ, the Christian is a Muslim while we have devils preaching the purpose of Christian churches? How can we believe that? Well, the reason why we believe that is because these devils are preaching to our fallen hearts. That's why we're able to believe that. Because no man, no woman who has the spirit of God, who has the spirit of the risen Christ, who has the heart of God, can believe that he can have his best life now while the promises of God have not been revealed yet. No man who can believe that. But anyone who believes that reveal themselves not to have the heart of God. They reveal themselves not to have the spirit of God. You see, because to believe that you can have your best life now is to believe that you have the promises that God has made, the promises that God has said he's going to give to his children are not as big and not as joyful, as joyous as what you can have now. That's what people preach and people fill these churches and people believe the nonsense. And then, of course, because you don't want to reveal yourself as the enemy of the church while you're preaching the pulpit, you can have to redirect people, take their focus on you as the enemy, and point someone else and say, that is your enemy, that Muslim, that's your enemy. You shouldn't allow Muslims to come into your country because if they come, they're going to take over the country. Let the Muslims take over America because America is not a Christian country. I'm not saying there are no Christians in America. I'm saying that America is not a Christian country. There are Christians in America. Just like there are Christians in Muslim countries. Just like there are Christians in England. That's why there are Christians in South Africa. But it does not make South Africa a Christian country. Because a Christian country, a South Africa cannot be a Christian country when it passes laws which are against God and against Christ. How can you claim to be for someone when you pass laws which compose the very person you claim to be for? You're contradicting yourself. But God is not a God of confusion. He's the God of order and peace and joy. That's why these people are confused. Because on one hand, they say they believe in God, but on the other hand, they say that they can have a life which God has promised them, but God has not given them now. I mean, have not given them yet, but they say they could have that life now without God having revealed what that life is. In their body of sin, they can have the life that God has promised. How is that? So this is, this is chaos. This is confusion. But anyone who has the spirit of the risen Christ knows that God is not the God of confusion. You see, but they divert the focus of who the enemy is because the enemy is behind the pulpit. The pulpit. They say the enemy is the Muslim. That's why he's bombing people. Do you see that? No, that's not the enemy. Because a Christian can be killed by a common thief. A common thief can break into your house as a Christian and then when he sees that you saw him kill you. Can you now say that that is the enemy of Christianity? No. The Muslims will try to spread their doctrine in the way that they spread it. You see, if a Christian get caught up in the fire, but you cannot declare and say that's the enemy of Christianity because the Muslims is the enemy of everyone because they, when a bomb goes off, it doesn't say, are you Christian? You say yes and then he kills you and then you say, are you Hindu? You say, you say yes because you, do you believe in God? It doesn't do that. A bomb just explodes. Whoever is caught in the fire and land dies. If you're Christian, Hindu, and non-believer, and atheist, same. How then can we conclude and say that Muslims are the enemies of Christianity? Why we ignore the very enemies which are preaching behind the pulpit, preaching the doctrine of demons? You see, that's why I'm saying that, you know, the true enemies of Christianity are in the pulpit they're not somewhere outside in the middle east or somewhere where a train has just exploded no they are right behind the pulpit but if you have eyes to see you will see but if you don't have eyes to see you won't see and because you don't have eyes to see that means you're probably not even christian you go to church you listen to just nonsense preaching about having money about god looking to make you rich as if the reason why Adam was kicked out of heaven was because he wasn't rich. See, because that's what you're saying when you think that, you know, God wants to make you rich. Because God wants to save you because of the problem that he had with Adam, which was sin. Not that he wasn't rich. 
do you see that so that is all that I have to say about the true enemies of Christianity the true enemies of Christianity is the devil Satan Lucifer but he has found people he can use who, whom he have put, he has put in the churches behind the pulpit and these people are the people who are dragging Christians straight down to hell thus the true enemies of Christianity of Christianity I mean are Christian at least that's what they claim to be so that's all that I have to say if you have anything to say you can leave a comment below and if you like receiving content like this you can subscribe to my channel so you can see content like this thank you for listening